Hey everybody, what's going on? Josh here with Scrapyard Films. If you're new to my channel, I make tutorials and I stream video games. And today we're going to be doing a Vegas Pro tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how to remove digital video noise from your footage. Be sure to watch this video all the way through because somewhere towards the end, I give away a little prize. Noise is a pain in the butt and can make your video look pretty bad. So we're going to be using a third party plugin called Denoise. It's made by the company Revision Effects, and they're the ones that make real smart motion blur and Twixter, if you've heard of those. So if you wanted to follow along, you can download the trial version of Denoise linked in the description below. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Okay, so now I'm inside Vegas Pro. I'm gonna be working in Vegas Pro 17, which the latest version of Denoise does work in Vegas 17, so there's no worries there. Now again, to do a little recap, video noise. You hear it all the time. Basically, video noise usually appears in the shadows and the highlights when you shoot in poorly lit or poorly exposed situations on a DSLR or digital camera of source. You usually see it more prominently when you up the ISO to compensate for a really dark scene. And what that does is it actually adds voltage to the sensor of your camera to make the image brighter. And that's what digital noise is, in a sense. It could definitely make your footage look bad and unprofessional when you have too much noise. So how can you reduce it? Your best bet to reducing noise is to properly light your scenes before you even start recording. You wanna make sure they're well lit and then you can always darken it down in post and that'll reduce a lot of noise. But let's just say you already recorded and there's a ton of noise. Here's a video of me and I purposely made it extremely dark and poorly lit and then bumped up the gain in post so you can see the noise. You can definitely see it on the left hand side over here for sure and the right hand side. It's just nasty flickering digital noise. Vegas Pro 17 doesn't have any noise reduction plugins built into it at all, so you have to use third-party software or plugins. Now just a fair warning, some footage can be too noisy to really get rid of 100% of the noise. You're really not ever going to get rid of 100% of the noise, because the more you reduce noise, usually the pastier and creamier and softer your video looks. So that's why you won't see noise removers, but noise reducers, because you can always reduce the noise to a tolerable level. Once you start getting serious about video editing and cinematography, you're going to really want to always run a layer of denoising on your footage, because that's what professionals do. Most big media companies denoise, YouTubers denoise, pretty much everybody denoises their video even if it's just a little bit because it adds that much more bit of professionalism. So the plugin we're going to be using today is Denoise and it's created by Revision Effects like I said earlier. They're the ones who created Real Smart Motion Blur and Twixter which are really awesome plugins themselves. So I'm going to be doing my best to denoise the footage you just saw. When you have the plugin installed over here on the left side in the video effects you'll see two plugins are added, Denoise and Denoise Frame Average. Denoise frame average is the simple way of removing noise. If you drag and drop it onto your footage, you'll only see a couple of options and that's it. It does a pretty good job, but it's the quick way of doing this. And if you go ahead and drag Denoise onto your clip, you're going to see a ton more options and this is where you can get really technical with the noise reduction. So first let's talk about Denoise frame average. On this plugin at the top you'll see the activation button and if you have a license you click that, activate it, you're good to go. Under here we have deviation threshold. This basically is a threshold level of how much it's going to average the frames together. If you go down here, we'll see frames before and frames after, and these are the frames it's gonna be averaging together with deviation threshold. You can move the slider from zero all the way to 100, but the higher you go with these numbers, the smoother and pastier it's gonna look. It will reduce the noise, but it will make motion look kinda weird the higher you go. So it's best to keep these numbers all fairly low. Let me go ahead and make this bigger so we can see some examples. So by default, it's on 21 and 1, and I have it turned off and I turn it on, you'll see that it smooths out a little bit. If I turn the threshold up and play it, we can see the motion blur looks kind of weird when I move quickly. You'll see it's really blurry. And if I turn this down, it makes it less blurry because it's averaging less. If we turn the frames before up and the frames after up, you can see it starts looking real weird. You get a real ghosting vibe when you do this. And plus it really lags your computer. So by default, they have it on 21 and 1. And I found that the default 21 and 1 works really well. But I make one adjustment. I change this one number to 2. So that averages one frame before, the current frame, and the two next frames. And that really makes the motion blur not look as prominent. I'll go ahead and show you a comparison of the original footage and these settings.
you can definitely tell that that weird blocky, really fast paced noise that you're seeing is reduced dramatically. I would say it's probably 70% reduced or around that area, especially when you look in the zoomed in comparisons. Two things to note is that Denoise frame average, I believe, uses GPU. So if you have hardware acceleration on, rendering this two second clip only took seven seconds. So we're looking at it takes about three to one, maybe four to one average of time to render when you've applied this effect. Another thing to note is I get the best results when I render in Magix Intermediate. So if I go to File, Render As, and then go to Magix Intermediate, and then choose maybe intermediate 422, customize it, and drop it down to proxy or LT, I get the best results with this. So let's go ahead and jump into the more detailed one, denoise. I'm gonna deactivate frame average and activate denoise. So I'm gonna briefly go over these options, but it can get much more in depth than what I'm gonna go. So if you wanna do some more intricate stuff, I'm gonna go ahead and put a link to the company's YouTube page and their video on this denoise plugin. So to start it off, we have the activation button for your license key, bam, you're good to go. Use GPU, you can tell it whether you wanna use GPU acceleration on or off. On dramatically makes a rendering difference. I render this two second clip in usually around 10 seconds. So it's about a five to one rendering time ratio. If I turn this off, the rendering time goes to one minute for this two second clip. So it's a 30 to one ratio and it takes a long time. So I always keep that on. So these next three options are spatial options. So what spatial processing basically means is it's gonna add blur in different ways. If we go down to spatial noise reduction and we drop that down, we'll see a bunch of options. None means you're completely turning this off. Diffuse means it's gonna average the spatial radius and threshold numbers down here. Smarter blur means it's gonna be adding Gaussian blur. Blur bias towards darks means it's going to focus the noise that's in the shadows and the darks more than the noise that's in the highlights. Blur bias towards whites is the opposite. It's going to be trying to focus the noise that's in the highlights and pretty much ignore the noise that's in the darks. Directional is an option that blurs and it does its best to keep the edges and the sharpness. Variational is a hybrid blur that tries to find similar textures all around the frame and average those together. This is the best option for older, real blocky, noisy footage. Temporal than variational means it's gonna use this temporal process first, and then it's gonna use the variational to try to make it a little sharper. So we see right under this, we have spatial radius. And this number is, you're telling it how many pixels outside of the center pixel that it's gonna average together. So if you have it on three, it's gonna average the three pixels to the left of the center pixels and three to the right. The spatial threshold level means that only pixels that differ 20% or less will get averaged in here. Anything higher will be ignored. So basically the lower number you have here, the less averaging is gonna happen. The higher number, the more averaging, but the smoother and more buttery look that starts to look kind of weird and plasticky will occur. And now we're gonna talk about temporal. Temporal process basically tracks pixels through the frames using optical flow and then averages them together. If we drop this option down, we see some options here. None basically turns this off. Average means it's gonna average the previous frame, current frame, and next frame into one equally. Median is very similar to average, but instead of averaging them equally, it actually does a calculation and gives you the median value of the average. Average two most similar pixels takes the previous, current, and next pixel, and then drops the one that's most different, and then averages the other two together. Motion weighted average is pretty much just like average, but it does a better job in trying to keep the sharpness. Average with previous is only going to average the previous and current frame. You usually want to choose this one when you're zooming in with your lens. Average with next means it's going to average the current frame and the next frame, and you usually want to choose this one if you're zooming out with the lens. Min is very similar to the average option, but it can actually help reduce lots of little white dots, and that's usually in a bunch of older footage. Max is the opposite of that, and it's like average, but it's pretty good at removing little black dots in older footage. And then under that, we have temporal quality. No MV means it's gonna turn off motion estimation. Best forward warp is the best quality for your motion estimation. It does make rendering take a little bit longer. Best inverse warp is a good version, but it's not as good as forward warp, and it makes rendering a little bit faster. Medium is basically right in the middle, medium motion estimation quality. And fast is purposefully not good estimation quality. Now this option is in here specifically for if you have kind of like a static shot and you have rain falling, it'll preserve the details of the rain while still reducing noise. So we choose this one and we go down, we see temporal threshold. And this level determines how much pixels can vary after the processing. So the lower this number is, you're basically going to be turning it off and the pixels won't vary that much. And the higher it is, the more the pixels will vary and it'll kind of make it a little smoother and the noise will be more reduced, but it'll kind of give you that little plasticky weird look. And you'll also see ghosting most likely. 
Temporal Thresh Mode, we usually want to keep this on max change, but you may see different results if you ignore pixels over the threshold. But for the most part, usually keep it on max change. Compare adjacent fields, you only want to enable this usually if you're using interlaced video. So like 1080i video instead of 1080p, this would help out a little bit. Did you see that code right there? If you go on Steam and redeem that code, you can get a free game. Mark segments cut A, B, C, and spatial only. You could basically use this to cut specific scenes for more advanced techniques like removing flash and things like that. But for the most part, if you keep this on cut A, you're going to see the best results, unless you want to do something way advanced, which I can link in the description below. Suppress salt and pepper. Basically, if you have any kind of older footage, you see salt and pepper in the noise. But for newer footage, you really wouldn't see that. But if you drag this up, you'll get a little bit more blurrier. And if you drag it down, it'll get a little more sharper. So usually just keep that at zero. It allows you to adjust the contrast too. You can adjust the contrast left and right, but you really don't need to ever do that. So I keep mine on zero. And then post sharpen amount, you can tell it how much you want it to sharpen as well after you're done. But usually when you increase the sharpness, you also bring back some noise. So I usually don't have this on either. So now that you know all of the details of how this works, one batch of settings isn't gonna work for everybody. It's all scene dependent. So I'm gonna show you the best settings I found for this scene I have right here, which is really dark. So I'm gonna put spatial noise reduction down on bias towards dark, so it's gonna focus more on the dark noise. Spatial radius, I like that at about 1.5. Spatial threshold, I keep that at about 17.5. Temporal process mode, I keep that on average. And then I keep temporal quality on best forward warp. My temporal threshold, I like to put that at 100. And then everything else I'm gonna keep the same down here. I'm gonna go ahead and show you the comparison using these settings and the original footage. Now you can definitely see a real nice reduction in noise here for sure. Yeah, the image is gonna get a little bit softer, but that's gonna pretty much happen when you are reducing noise. Your image gets a little bit softer. But as you can see, it reduces the noise, I would say anywhere from 70 to 80%, and especially if you looked in the zoom in parts. Now again, when rendering this, if you have GPU acceleration on, the render time for this two second clip was only about 10 seconds. So it's a five to one time ratio. And also if you use the magic intermediate render settings, you get the best quality as well. And so there you have it. You now know how denoise works and the type of noise you can remove using this plugin. It's gonna work differently for different types of footage. So you're just gonna have to play around the settings, but at least you know what they do and how to use them efficiently. At the price of 150 bucks, I really don't think the plugin's worth that much. The program is almost like 10 years old, but because there are other plugins out there that do essentially the same thing, but even at a more advanced level and are cheaper, I bet if you guys were to drop the price maybe to like 50 bucks, you'd definitely see a boost in sales. And I would recommend this to everybody to put in their arsenal. So thanks again for watching guys and I'll see y'all in the next video. And I wanna give a special shout out to all of my super subscribers up there at the top. Be sure to check out their channels for some awesome content.